Houdini 20 brings us a new ripple solver that is super useful and extremely fast, so I figured we'd take a look at how it all works. So this project file will be available on Patreon if you want to learn how I created this little water ripple animation from the intro, then go ahead and download that. But let's go ahead and drop down a SOP create and take a look at how this ripple solver works. So let's drop down a grid. So we will need some geometry to start off with. Let's go ahead and set this to wire shade. So we need some geometry to start off with. It's going to be our, our collider or our surface. So let's set this grid to 100 by 100. And then let's drop down that ripple solver. Let's just call it ripple solver. And it has three inputs. So it's going to need your rest geometry. It's going to need a displaced geometry. In this case, I'm just gonna use our grid for that. And then the third input is going to be the collision geometry. So the collision geometry is basically what's going to initiate the ripples to be created. So you can just have an object, you know, fall once through this, or you can have it bouncing up and down. Or in my case, I'm gonna use a pop net to create that displacement. Let's drop down a transform before that and wire our grid into that and our transform into the pop net here. And with this trans uh, transform, I want to drop this uh, translate value to two in the Y direction. And I'm going to also just scale it in a little bit just so we don't have any particles that are spawning right on the edge because I don't really like the way that it works when it hits the very edge. So let's take a look at the pop net. And in here we can turn off our guides and we'll set our birth rate. I only want them to spawn for, you know, like 30 frames or so. So let's do dollar FF is less than 30, just so that we can see what is kind of going on with our surface here. And let's set the constant birth rate to something like 10. And we also want them to fall down. So let's drop down a gravity. And lastly, I want to make sure this stays clean. So let's kill, let's drop down a pop kill and kill the particles after they go below a certain point. So we'll set the size to 10 by 10 and we'll set the center down to negative one so that they actually pass through our grid. So let's go back up and we need to actually have some geometry to have hit our our grid. So we need to drop down a sphere. And let's set this to a whoops, a polygon. Let's drop down a copy to points. And wire these in. And I'm going to drop down the size quite a bit just to give us something pretty small. And we can now wire that into our ripple solver. And if I go ahead and press play, you can see that we should start to have something going on, which we do. So first thing I want to just let you know of is if the particles, if you're using this method, the particles are falling too fast through the geometry, it may not register. So let's just take a look and see if we can create that effect. So let's template our points here. And if I press play, you can see it's actually, these are still kind of a little big. So let's set this down to like 0.07. If I press play, you see that we have some particles that are falling through over here on the edge. So like this one in particular, falls straight through and doesn't activate our geometry. And if I go into our solver, I've noticed that if we just crank up the sub steps, that sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Just got to play with it, see so there it doesn't go through. We cranked up our sub steps, our men's sub steps to even, I don't know, something like that. And press play. It's gonna slow down our simulation, but we still have particles that are kind of passing through. And even if we set up our global sub steps, it still doesn't really want to work in, in some cases. So just be aware that the sub steps may not actually impact um, the simulation, you still have them passing through. So you may have to actually limit the speed of your particles or your object passing through so that it actually registers that it's going through the geometry. And I've also noticed that there's issues if the geometry is too thin. So even if this is like poly extruded just a little bit, 
um, it may cause some issues. So just be aware that there are some things that don't particularly work that great if uh, they don't have enough time to really register. So let's go ahead and jump back here. So if I press play, you can see that we have some things going on. Actually, let's set this transform back down to like two so we don't have those passing straight through. And actually, let's go ahead and take our grid and let's crank this up to 500 by 500. And you can see that this actually is going to run really, really fast. This ripple solver is extremely quick. You see, we don't have any sort of issues with playback there. It's playing back in pretty much real time. But if I look at our circles here, you notice one thing, and that is that they're continuing outward kind of forever. They don't lose any of their energy. They're just going to kind of go on forever, which we probably don't want because that's not very realistic. So we need to come to our setup for that and we can affect this conservation. So if I press play with this conservation lowered down quite a bit there, you can see that they lose their energy and they kind of dissipate all out rather quickly. So you can mess around with that and get the look that you're going for. I also think these waves are moving a little bit slow. So maybe let's set this wave speed to like two. And if I press play, and yeah, maybe that's a little bit fast, maybe like 1.3. See that we get our waves moving out and they're dissipating out, which is kind of a little bit more realistic from what we want or what we had. So there's also a different wave type. It's a vector. You can mess around with that. I haven't really played around with that, so not really sure how it works. I'd have to look at the documentation and play around with it. The rest spring here is kind of how quickly it returns back to the rest state. That's kind of a loose explanation of it. I haven't really messed with that because it didn't... Some of these settings on the, the solver are a little bit finicky to get working um, and just have them affect things the way that you would expect. And as an example of that, let's take a look at the thickness section here in just a second. So if you look at our impact, our initial impacts, we have these very, very high splashes, which doesn't look very good for a just a pure displacement. So if you're doing some sort of like rain simulation, you'd want another particle sim that's popping up uh, particles or little water droplets up from where these particles impact. So let's go ahead and tackle getting rid of these and let's kind of take a look at the thickness and explain what I mean when I say that things don't exactly work the way that you may think they would initially. So if I drop this thickness multiplier down pretty low here, if I press play, it doesn't seem to affect much, but if I start to bring this max thickness down quite a bit too, I press play, you see we get rid of some of those big splashes. So we have to play around with this a little bit and we can start to get rid of those, those really big splashes and kind of dial it back into something that's a little bit more realistic. But again, it's a little bit finicky and you kind of have to play around with it quite a bit. Another thing that can help with this is the clamping. So if I go ahead and enable that, if I press play now, you can see that we kind of get a much smoother result there, which we can dial back up if we raise up the max thickness there. So we start to get that back, maybe drop it down. It's a lot of, of playing around with the different settings, get something that, that looks good, but it can be kind of hard to kind of dial it in. That's what I say where things don't exactly work exactly the way that you would think. I guess this is this clamping is for when it's um, from a zero to one value. So it's gotta be within this, this, um, those value ranges. So if you're outside of those value ranges, it's not going to, to work that well. So just play around with it and get a look that looks good for your simulation. And also if I just go ahead and set this back to defaults, and enable our clamping. Let's actually set those back to default too. So we get that, let's go ahead, let's maybe drop that down a little bit. Maybe a little bit more. Try to get a, a little bit less, less height on those initial splashes. 
kind of a little bit hard to to dial in but if we take a look if we, let's drop this back down actually is if we look at this and we start to see that we lose some of our energy conservation that has to do with that clamping so just be aware that you may have to crank up the conservation a little bit to get that to go back the way that you want if you're using the, the clamping values and this may be a little bit hard to see let's turn on smooth shaded and hopefully that be a little bit easier to see in our scene it's definitely a lot easier without the clamping but you can also come in here and mess around with the different outputs so you can output some different um, different attributes if you want and um, obviously as I said you can mess around with the wave type if you want to to learn more about that I would definitely look at the documentation because I haven't really messed with that much uh, but that kind of wraps up the overview of the ripple solver here it can be a little bit finicky that's just kind of my my first take on on using it but you can get some some good results and do some cool things with it so definitely take a look at it and play around with it uh, it's a lot easier to use than the old ripple solver and gives better results and everything just in general in my opinion so uh, definitely play around with it and, and see what you can create with it but anyways as i said at the start the uh, project file for this will be available on patreon so if you want to grab that you can do so on patreon and learn how i went about creating that intro animation so anyways if you want to learn more about houdini i have a bunch of other videos on my channel i go over a bunch of different things inside houdini so if you want to learn more about houdini in general make sure to check that out i'm also covering a bunch of things inside houdini 20. I'm offering uh, some of the and you know less complex stuff up there for free for anybody that wants to just mess around with it and uh, learn more about the the new stuff in Houdini 20. So grab that if you want, and also follow on Patreon because it is free to do so now, and I'm going to be using the free uh, like membership to to drop some some more free stuff here in the future. So make sure to check that out if you're interested. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day. Oh, 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 oh,